The Chinese, like people the world over, have a special fascination for monkeys. The attraction probably has much to do with the close evolutionary relationship between humans and monkeys. These not too distant cousins mirror many of our behaviors. They have a high level of intellect, expressive faces, and are inquisitive about the world around them. Understanding these creatures can tell us much about ourselves. There are 14 species of monkeys in China, quite a high number for a mostly temperate country. But opportunities to observe monkeys in the wild in China are rare. It is more common to see these fascinating animals in zoos. In some parts of the country, scientists are now going to extraordinary lengths to learn firsthand about the lives of some of our closest relatives in the animal world. No trip to Beijing would be complete without a visit to the city zoo. It's one of the few places in the world where giant pandas can be seen. Although the promise of seeing rare and endearing giant pandas draws thousands of people through the zoo's gates each day, it is the monkey exhibits where visitors spend most of their time. Tourists and locals alike stand at the monkey enclosures, watching and waiting to see the antics of the inhabitants within. And they are seldom disappointed. <laughs> the captivation gives the zoo some of its best opportunities for education about issues such as conservation and animal welfare. Of all the monkeys found in China, the most famous are the golden monkeys. These rare primates are unique to China and elusive in the wild. Few people would ever have the opportunity to see golden monkeys outside of zoos. Since their existence was first brought to the attention of the world scientific community in the 1880s, golden monkeys have attracted much interest from primate researchers. Despite their fame, they are very hard to find and study in the wild. 
They live in remote areas. Expeditions must be planned in detail and well equipped to cope with harsh climatic conditions. Researchers can trek for days, sometimes weeks, in areas where golden monkeys are said to occur, but never catch sight of them. This is the Shenongjia forest in central China. The area has suffered greatly from logging, but golden monkeys are protected here in a reserve. One of the reasons golden monkeys are so difficult to track down is the great speed and agility with which they move through trees. They almost never come down to the ground. There are three species of golden monkey. This is the Sir Chuan golden monkey, and it has an extraordinary appearance. Its face is tinged with blue and has a tiny and severely upturned nose. Males have lappets, loose folds of flesh, on the sides of their mouths. The coats of golden monkeys are coloured with varying amounts of gold and black, and dense, long hair grows around their shoulders like capes. These grow longer and brighter with age. The Sichuan golden monkey's scientific species name is Roxelanae. It is said to be a tribute to a Spanish slave girl, Roxelana, who was captured by Turkish pirates. Eventually, she came to be owned by Suleiman the Magnificent, Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. The Sultan became obsessed with the beautiful girl, her large blue eyes, red gold hair, and upturned nose. Golden monkeys are high mountain animals usually found in forests up to about 3,500 meters above sea level. They live in troops composed of families, each of which is led by a dominant male who has up to five females and various young with him. Troops range widely in size, from as few as 20 animals to as many as 300. They seem to fluctuate in size with the seasons. Each troop has a huge home range of up to 50 square kilometers. The animals move throughout their particular area over several weeks, appearing to follow a regular foraging pattern. These are large monkeys. An adult male can attain a weight of over 30 kilograms and a length from head to tail tip of two meters. Females are much smaller. Golden monkeys are langurs and are thought by some researchers to be strict vegetarians, eating only leaves, buds, shoots and fruit. 
There are, however, reports of them also eating insects and birds' eggs. In the winter, they survive by eating mainly bark and lichen. Golden monkeys mate in autumn. Females give birth in spring, after six-month-long pregnancies. Newborns weigh as little as 500 grams. Mothers are helped by juveniles to care for babies. It is thought that the males may also be very attentive and protective during the first few days after their offspring are born. In the past, the coats of golden monkeys were believed to prevent rheumatism. They were regarded as so special that only Manchurian officials were allowed to wear them. Today, hunting of golden monkeys is illegal. However, human pressures have already left a mark on these animals. Poaching and habitat loss have caused serious declines. All three species are regarded as endangered, with the Sichuan golden monkey appearing to be the most secure. Estimates of its numbers range widely from just a few thousand to as many as 15,000. It is feared that in the wild, the other two species may now be each represented by only a few hundred animals. It is mainly markets outside of China that create a demand for monkey products. Fur, meat and leather from golden monkeys are particularly valued by poachers. Each year, their snares cause the agonizing deaths of hundreds of golden monkeys, despite strict anti-poaching legislation. This large male had a lucky escape when it struggled out injured and barely alive from a poacher's snare. He was found by these researchers, who called for the assistance of a doctor in a nearby town. The monkey's wound was dressed, and he was given antibiotic injections. His forelimb appeared to be partially paralyzed, but otherwise the prognosis was good. Golden monkeys are normally very timid of humans, but this one started to respond favorably to people within just a few days of constant contact. This was despite the pain and discomfort that was necessary for him to endure during treatments. For each injection, the monkey was given something to chew to distract his attention. Male golden monkeys are known to fight between themselves for females and to establish dominance hierarchies. But this male showed little in the way of aggressive behavior towards these researchers. Although he did not seem to be distressed in the company of humans or while foraging around the campsite, he did, however, appear to pine for his troop. After 12 days recuperating, he was taken back up into the mountains where he was found and successfully released. The golden monkey is recognized as an animal symbol of China almost as much as the giant panda. But there is still much to learn about the biology and behavior of these monkeys.
A tree overlooking the rugged terrain of Henan Tai Hung Mountain near Beijing offers a perfect vantage point to observe the antics of one of the world's best known monkeys, the rhesus macaque. Macaques are among the most successful of all primates. Rhesus macaques are widespread in China and also found in parts of Southeast Asia and Afghanistan. In recent years, scientists have become worried about declines in their numbers at some locations in China. A reserve has been established here to help protect these monkeys. The behavior and habits of this group are typical of the species. Rhesus macaques usually occur in groups of up to about 200 individuals. They are sturdy, medium-sized monkeys. An adult can attain a maximum body weight of about 8 kilograms. The macaque's diet consists mostly of plant material, but insects and other small animals are also sometimes captured and eaten. Macaques appear to scrutinize everything they eat checking that grains and seeds found on the ground are clean and that fruit is ripe. In these mountains, there are several plants known to have medicinal properties. These are included in the monkey's diet, although scientists remain unsure whether they eat them simply because they like them or because the animals know they have curative powers. Macaques have well-developed cheek pouches in which they store food so that it can be chewed slowly and repeatedly before swallowing. This aids digestion. Grooming is a common pastime and is thought to reinforce social ties, as well as remove troublesome parasites. A group of rhesus macaques is composed of unrelated males and closely related females. A dominance hierarchy operates in both sexes. The Chinese call the highest ranking male in a group Ho Wang, the monkey king. He carries his tail upwards and curled at the end as a sign of his authority. The king can mate with whichever female in the group he chooses and he does so frequently. A monkey is usually king for up to four years before being dethroned by a younger contender. During meal times, the king positions himself in the center of the group. This not only provides him with protection, but allows him to exert influence over the others. One of the advantages of living in such a tightly knit group becomes apparent with the approach of a threat. Two or three monkeys always act as lookouts in the trees. As soon as one sees potential danger, it shakes the tree to warn the others. The group quickly scampers for safety. Against the rocks, their brown-grey coats provide effective camouflage.
When the danger has passed, the group relaxes and returns to the ground to forage. There are two theories on the selection of lookouts. They may be assigned by the king as punishment for flouting the group's rules. Or it may be simply that the members of the group rotate shifts on a voluntary basis. While on lookout, the monkeys never leave their posts and don't eat or drink. Humans are a comparatively recent threat to China's rhesus macaques. Birds of prey are more traditional foes. But the monkey's response is the same. Babies in particular are at risk of being carried away by hawks and eagles. And adult monkeys make sure they gather them up quickly. When the time comes for mothers to descend from the mountains and return to foraging, babies are often left behind. Rock ledges offer better safety than the ground. They stay together in what wildlife observers term a play center. Unchaperoned, they behave like a class of schoolchildren left to their own devices. This is a time to practice jumping and climbing, develop social skills, and simply to play. Macaques are renowned for their ability to withstand harsh environmental conditions that other monkeys couldn't tolerate. But the winters in this part of China can be particularly bitter, and food extremely scarce. Even macaques find it hard. From the first signs of winter's approach, keepers at this reserve provide the monkeys with supplementary food and water. This has taken place for several years. The macaques have become used to the visits and learned to respond to the calls and whistles of keepers. As the weather grows harsher, the keepers continue to brave the cold to ensure the monkeys survive.
It is not uncommon for the Chinese to go to extraordinary lengths to care for monkeys. This man has been feeding these macaques almost daily for more than 10 years. They live on an island in the Mengdong River in Henan province in southern China. They have learned to expect his visits and know his calls. The macaques are this man's life and he has come to be known as the Monkey King. During the mid-1980s, Primate experts from universities in China and Japan collaborated on a three-year field study on Yellow Mountain in eastern China. They were drawn there by another macaque known as the Tibetan monkey, a poorly understood creature. The name is misleading. It was called the Tibetan monkey last century by scientists who mistakenly thought it came from Tibet. But it is actually found in other parts of China. Its forest habitat features many rocks and steep cliffs. The research team's most intense study was carried out on a group of 28 monkeys, named the Yue Lin Kong group. This is the troop's dominant male, Yellow Hair, an eight-year-old who has just gained the top rank. His authority is absolute and gives him preferential mating rights to all the females. This is Yellow Hair's predecessor, Dua Shi Zhe. His left index finger is paralyzed. The third male in line is Wu Tsung. He has lost his upper front teeth. The dominant female in the troop is known as Gun. Her status is reinforced by a very close relationship with Yellow Hair. This female is known as Ye. And this is the troop's oldest female, Gun. These monkeys live at close quarters in a rugged environment. Their survival relies on tight social order that is maintained by the troop's strict dominance hierarchy. Any monkey that ignores this risks a prompt attack. Normally, Wu Sung, the third ranking male, respects Yellow Hair's authority. On this occasion, however, he has transgressed the troop's rules by approaching too closely to a young monkey he has no right to be near. Duo Shi Zhe, the second ranking male, rushes to attack. Yellow Hair steps in momentarily to show his support for Duo Shi Zhe. Wu Sung is unhurt, but he has learnt his lesson. Despite Duo Shi Zhe's loyalty, even he sometimes makes mistakes. Here he approaches Gun to mate. Gun refuses and calls for Yellow Hair, who quickly intervenes. In spring, the troop moves regularly in search of food. They start at about six each morning, 
adults leading the way, the young in the middle and the strongest males at the rear. They cover about two kilometers an hour and maintain constant contact. There is no shortage of food in these mountains, but the most palatable offerings come with spring. These monkeys are mostly plant eaters. They survive during the winter on dried tree branches and leaves. In spring, they feast on tender new leaves, shoots and buds. The researchers have discovered that they also eat small lizards and birds, if they can catch them and will also raid birds' nests for eggs. Like all the cats, Tibetan monkeys have cheek pouches which allow them to store and chew food thoroughly before swallowing. This is important because their digestive systems are not as efficient at breaking down plant material as those of some monkeys that are exclusively vegetarian. Mating takes place all year round, but it increases in frequency during autumn. Yellow hair mates dozens of times a day during this period. Females usually give birth in spring. Ye is about to become a mother for the first time. Gun is also pregnant. These monkeys have an extremely high reproductive rate compared to some other macaques. Most of the females appear to produce a baby every year. Despite this, the macaque population in this area remains stable. For reasons which the researchers cannot yet explain, a sudden death spell claims about one-third of the group every six or seven years.
Grooming is an important social activity for Tibetan monkeys. It keeps their coats clean of dirt and salt secretions. But it also seems to follow a complicated protocol that reinforces dominance hierarchies. Because of Yellow Hair's rank, he does not attend to the others, but his subordinates are always eager to show their respect by grooming him. Dor Shi Zhe approaches this lower-ranking male and sits. It's a silent but implicit order to which the younger monkey quickly responds. This is a six-year-old male named Xiao Chia, who often approaches yellow hair in an attempt to improve his standing in the group. But this time he appears to have breached protocol and Dua Shi Zhe intervenes. To appease Dua Shi Zhe, the younger male submits to grooming and yellow hair leaves. Between males, mounting is an important form of greeting. Usually, subordinates offer their backs as an invitation to more senior males. On this occasion, Xiao Chiang's approach to yellow hair has upset Gun. She sends the young male away and then turns her anger towards another subordinate who has been grooming yellow hair. These macaques are normally tolerant of humans in their midst, but sometimes they seem unsure of how to behave towards the intruders. This female appears frightened, angry and concerned for the safety of a young one. As long as the research assistant continues to sit still, she is safe. One of the unusual behaviors discovered by the researchers has been termed happy dusk. It is an extraordinary reaction to food. Nearly all the adult males gather around yellow hair and become almost hysterical with apparent joy. Normal social rankings seem to be forgotten temporarily. The researchers, however, made an even more surprising observation and witnessed behavior that has previously been unreported among wild monkeys. Young males appear to be offered between older monkeys, particularly adult males, as if they are some sort of appeasing gift. Recipients respond by mouthing the young male's penises. This appears to be a unique ritual that may play a role in the structure of the troop's dominance hierarchy. The behavior appears to do no harm to the babies.
Babies are reliant on their mothers for the first six months of life, although they start to become very inquisitive about the world around them within a month of birth. Female offspring stay with their family group, but when males reach maturity, they leave to join other troops. In dense forests on the sheltered side of mountain ranges in southern Tibet, there live some monkeys that scientists know much less about. Locals call them long-tailed langurs. Because of their remote habitat, this group of monkeys has only been discovered recently. These monkeys have mostly grey-brown coats and black faces, surrounded by long white cheek hairs and eyebrows. Their distribution is restricted here by geographical boundaries, and it is thought that there may be only about 1,000 in China. Langurs spend most of their lives in the trees. Their thumbs are little more than stumps, giving them hands which work like hooks to hold securely onto branches. At about one meter in length, this langur's tail is longer than its body. This also helps it move with agility through the trees. Langurs do not have cheek pouches like macaques, but their digestive system is well adapted to an almost exclusively vegetarian diet. They have large, complex stomachs containing bacteria to help break down the hard-to-digest cellulose of plant cell walls. They move from tree to tree, feeding on flowers, wild fruit, shoots and leaves. These langurs live in small groups. Each is led by an adult male. Breeding occurs in spring and females usually only give birth to one baby at a time. Legislation and local religious beliefs provide protection for these langurs, but they remain threatened by habitat destruction and illegal hunting. More and more scientists are venturing into the wilds of China to expand their understanding and respect for the country's monkeys. Some scientists now actually buy monkeys kept as caged merchandise at markets to release them back to the wild. Research is also helping to generate interest in developing more reserves for China's monkeys. And captive breeding programs for several endangered species are being investigated. With planning, it is hoped that the future of all China's monkeys can be secured.